it's Mr. Harlan. Such a lovely sound. Ah, some more cabin ASMR. Come to me. Sit, sit by me by the fire, and uh, we will, yes, talk about something amazing. Besides the usual things I do, you know, the fire's right there. Nice cabin, even though there's sadly no rain. I just wish there was some rain. But currently, as I make this video, there is rain. It's raining outside. Ah, rainy day fun on a Monday. Today, we will be talking about the hijack... Hijacker, goddamn. Computer hacker named Graham Ivan Clark. But it was the incident of the 2020 Twitter account hijacking. On July 15th, 2020, between... Oh, I hate military times this, but I'm going to say them. 20, 20 zero, zero, and 2200 zero, zero, UTC, whatever that is, reportedly 130 high-profile Twitter accounts were compromised by outside parties to a Bitcoin scam. Twitter and other media sources confirmed that the perpetrators had gained access to Twitter's administrative tools, so they could alter the accounts themselves and post the tweets directly. They appeared to have used social engineering to gain access to tools via Twitter employees. Three individuals were arrested by authorities on July 31st, 2020 and charged with wire fraud, money laundering, and identified identity theft, and unauthorized computer access related to the scam. The scam tweets asked individuals to send Bitcoin currency to a specific current cryptocurrency wallet, with the promise of the Twitter user that money sent would be doubled and returned as a charitable gesture. Within minutes from the initial tweets, more than 320 transactions had already taken place on one of the wallet addresses, and Bitcoin to a value of more than 110,000 had been deposited in one account before the scam messages were removed by Twitter. In addition, full message history data from eight non-verified accounts was also acquired. The Incident Forensic analysis of the scam showed that the initial scam messages were posted by accounts with short one or two character distinctive names such as at6 this was a, this was followed by cryptocurrency twitter accounts at around 2000 utc on july 15th 2020 including those of coinbase coindesk and binance the scam then moved to more high profile accounts with the first tweet sent from elon musk account 2017 utc other apparently Compromised accounts included those of well-known inv individuals such as Barack Obama, Joe Biden, Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos, Mr. Beast, Michael Bloomberg, wow, Warren Buffett, never heard of them, Floyd Mayweather Jr., heard of him, Kim Kardashian, she can go, well, Kim Kardashian can go fuck herself, because <laughs> she stinks, and so does Kanye West. And speaking of which, 
the Twitter account of Kanye West as well. Com and companies such as Apple, Uber, and Cash App. Twitter believed 130 accounts were affected, though only 45 were actually used. The tweet scam to tweet the scam message. Most of the accounts, most of the accounts that were accused in the scam had at least one a million followers. And this was all during the COVID-19 relief effort. Twitter released a statement saying they were aware of a security incident impacting accounts on Twitter and that they were taking steps to fix it. Shortly afterwards, it disabled the ability for some accounts to tweet or to reset their password. Twitter has not confirmed which accounts were restricted, but many users with accounts Twitter had marked as verified confirmed that they were unable to tweet. Approximately three hours after the first scam tweets had began. Perpetrators. Security researcher Brian Krebs corroborated with TechCrunch's source with information obtained by Reuters that the scam appeared to have originated in the OG Users Group, or the OG Users Forum, OG standing for original, was established for selling and buying social media accounts with shorter rare names, and according to its owner, speaking to Reuters, the practice of trafficking in hacked credentials was prohibited. Screenshots from the forum show various users on the forum offering to hack on into Twitter accounts at US dollars of $2,000 and $3,000 each. Krupp stated one of the members may have been tied to the August 2019 takeover of Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey's Twitter account. The OG user's owner told Reuters that the accounts shown in the screenshot, screenshots were since banned. The FBI announced on July 16th it was launching an investigation into the scam, so it was used to perpetrate criminal cryptocurrency fraud, a criminal offense. The Senate Select Committee on Intelligence also planned to ask Twitter for additional information on the hack. As the committee's vice chair, Mark Warner, stated, the ability of bad actors to take over prominent accounts, even fleetingly singles, signals a worrisome vulnerability in this media environment. The United States Department of Justice announced the arrest of and charges of three individuals tied to the scam on July 31st, 2020. A 19-year-old from the United Kingdom was charged with multiple accounts of conspiracy to commit wire fraud, conspiracy to commit money laundering, and the intentional access of a protected computer. And a 22-year-old from Florida was charged with aiding and abetting the international access. Both will be tried in the United States District Court for the Northern District of California. A third individual, a minor from Florida who was indicted but due to their age, the charges were sealed in juvenile court in Florida. The state will try him as an adult. Over 30 charges related to felony counts, including organized fraud, communication fraud, identity theft and hacking under the state's law, allowing them to convict minors as adults for financial fraud cases. The Florida teen, Graham Ivan Clark, pleaded not guilty to the charges on August the 4th, 2020. The teen then accepted a plea bargain on March, 20, on March 2022, which included serving three years of jail time, including time served as a youthful offender, even though he had turned 18 during the month during the trial. A fourth individual, a 16-year-old from Massachusetts, had been identified as a possible su suspect in the scam by the FBI, though federal agents, oh my god, I just bit my tongue and I'm in pain now, 
Though federal agents had conducted a warranted search of his possessions in late August 2020, no indictments have been made yet. All the reactions. Mm -hmm. Affected users could only retweet content leading NBC News to set up a temporary non-verified account so that they could continue to tweet retweeting significant updates on their main account. Some National Weather Service forecast offices were unable, were unable to tweet severe weather warnings. That's a severe issue, with the National Weather Service in Lincoln, Illinois, initially unable to tweet a tornado warning, which is actually very serious if you can't do that. As for someone like me, who lives in Missouri, and Missourians know what tornadoes can do. Just look up a picture of what happened in 1959 to the place where the St. Louis Blues were going to play in the future on June the 5th, 1967, when a giant section of the St. Louis Arena's roof and a decorative tower was ripped clean off the building, and had the building been damaged any more severely, the blues would not exist, as the building would have been demolished mm. then. But sadly, when it comes to that building, if it wasn't TN if it wasn't a tornado that was to bring the old barn down, it was TNT and Dynamite on February 28th, 1999. Now that little history segment is over. Let's get back to what I was talking about before. Joe Biden's campaign started in CN to CNN, well, stated to CNN that they were in touch with Twitter on the matter and that his account had been locked down. Google temporarily disabled his Twitter carousel and search feature in its search feature as a result of these security issues. Due to the incident, Twitter's Inc. stock price fell by 4% after the market's close. By the end of the next day, Twitter Inc. stock price ended at $36 and 40 down 38 cents. I, I don't understand stock market stuff. Per forgive me if I'm getting it wrong. On September 29, 2020, Twitter hired Rinky Sethius as CISO and VP of the company after the breach. On November 20th, 2020, Hulu aired the fifth episode of the New York Times Presents, well, the New York Times Presents series entitled The Teenager Who Hacked Twitter, which details the events of the incident. Wow. That was pretty fun. To, uh, look over, but... As always, I know it's going to be sad, but I will make more videos next Monday. And as one YouTuber said, we shall do this very soon again, my friends. But another thing, let's go blues in October. Yes, yes, I can't wait. Mm. But other than that, yes, we shall do this very soon again, my friends. Next Monday, two videos.
Goodbye, everyone.